I've always been skeptical about ghosts until I lived in that basement apartment. My wife and I had just gotten married and were struggling to find affordable housing. When we came across the listing for a cheap basement unit in an old Victorian house, we jumped at the opportunity despite some initial misgivings about the dark, cramped space. From the moment we moved in, there was an oppressive, ominous feeling, like we were being watched. At first, we tried to brush it off as just adjusting to a new place. But then strange things started happening. One night, I woke up to the sound of shattering glass. I rushed to the kitchen to find a glass had flown off the shelf and smashed against the opposite wall. There was no way it could have fallen that far on its own. A few days later, my wife was home alone when she felt something hit her in the back. She turned around, but no one was there. The activity escalated quickly after that. Objects would move on their own right before our eyes. I remember one evening when I placed my keys on the table, only to find them in the bathroom a few minutes later. We'd hear footsteps and whispers when we were the only ones home. The worst was the oppressive feeling of dread that permeated the apartment. We both started having vivid nightmares and would wake up with unexplained bruises and scratches. One particularly haunting night, we were watching TV when we heard a loud thump coming from the bedroom. It sounded like someone had dropped a heavy object on the floor. My heart raced as I exchanged worried glances with my wife. We hesitated before checking it out, but curiosity got the better of us. As we entered the bedroom, everything appeared normal, until I noticed that our closet door was slightly ajar. I felt an icy chill run down my spine as I approached it. Just then, I heard a whisper right behind me, get out. It was so clear that I spun around, but there was no one there. My wife and I decided to do some research on the house's history, hoping to uncover some rational explanation for our experiences. We discovered that the previous tenant had moved out abruptly after only a few months due to strange occurrences. That didn't help ease our minds, if anything, it made us more anxious. We began to feel trapped in our own home. The final straw came one night as we were getting ready for bed. As soon as we walked into the bedroom, a disembodied voice clearly said my name, Paul, move. My wife and I looked at each other in shock. It felt like ice water coursed through my veins. I said out loud, you've got it, bud. We moved out two days later. After settling into a new place, we felt an immense sense of relief wash over us. However, our curiosity about what had happened lingered. We later learned that the elderly woman who owned the house had died shortly after we moved out. She had been living alone for years before her passing. The property was torn down not long after that and remains an empty lot to this day, overgrown with weeds and debris. Every time I drive by, chills run down my spine remembering our terrifying experience there. I now believe that malevolent spirits exist and can torment the living. That basement apartment opened my eyes to a dark supernatural world I never wanted to believe in. To this day, I often wonder about that voice, who it belonged to, and what it wanted from us. Growing up, our family home was situated near an old mining railroad in the mountains of North Jersey. As kids, my siblings and I would often play in the woods behind our house, exploring the remnants of the abandoned rail line. Little did we know that those innocent adventures would lead to some of the most chilling experiences of our lives. It started with subtle occurrences. The feeling of being watched while playing in the backyard, unexplained cold spots even on warm summer days, and occasional glimpses of shadowy figures darting between trees. At first, we dismissed these as products of overactive imaginations. After all, who wouldn't be spooked by an old railroad? But as time went on, these encounters became more frequent and harder to explain away. One evening during summer break, my sister Jenna and I were walking along the old railroad tracks at dusk when we heard a distinct sound, a train whistle echoing through the trees in the distance. We froze, knowing that no trains had run on these tracks for decades. The whistle grew louder, accompanied by rhythmic chugging sounds and screeching metal wheels on rails. Panic set in as we realized something wasn't right. This wasn't just our imagination running wild anymore. We could feel vibrations beneath our feet, as if an unseen train was barreling down towards us. 
In sheer terror, we ran off the tracks, just as an ethereal train rushed past us, its ghostly passengers staring at us with hollow eyes. That was just the beginning of our encounters with whatever haunted those woods. Over the years, we experienced numerous paranormal events in and around our home. Objects moving on their own, doors slamming shut without any breeze, and disembodied voices echoing through the house late at night. The most terrifying incidents always seemed connected to that old railroad. One night, while watching TV with my family, my mother suddenly screamed from upstairs. She claimed she saw a group of ghostly miners walking through our living room wall. They were dressed in tattered clothes with pickaxes slung over their shoulders. She described them as if they were reliving their final moments before tragedy struck. As I got older, curiosity drove me to research local history surrounding our area, and what I found chilled me to my core. There had been a catastrophic mining accident in 1892, resulting in dozens of deaths among workers who had been trapped underground during a collapse. It seemed their restless spirits were still tied to this land, reliving their final moments over and over again while searching for peace they could never find. Living with these constant reminders took its toll on us. While initially thrilling for kids chasing ghosts during summer nights, it became exhausting trying to cope with fear lurking around every corner within those walls. My siblings began sleeping with lights on. Even our parents grew uneasy about staying too late at home alone. Eventually though, after years spent living under such eerie circumstances, we moved away from that haunted house by the old mining railroad tracks, but not without leaving behind countless memories etched into each creaking floorboard. Even now, years later, I can't shake memories of those nights filled with whispers echoing through empty hallways or shadows flitting past windows late at night. The experience has left me profoundly respectful towards unknown forces beyond comprehension and firmly believing some places are forever marked by tragedies long past. It was during my college years at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, that I had my most unforgettable encounter with the paranormal. The town had a reputation for being one of America's most haunted places. Numerous ghost stories circulated among students and locals alike about restless spirits roaming its streets after dark. One particular legend caught my attention, the story of a young man who died in a motorcycle accident while visiting his secret lover nearby decades ago. According to local lore, his ghost still haunted Milford Road, a stretch notorious for sightings, appearing only to those who summoned him by flashing their car lights three times. Intrigued but doubtful myself, I convinced my girlfriend Sarah, along with another friend Jake, to join me on a late-night excursion into town for some ghost hunting fun. As we drove down dark, winding roads illuminated solely by moonlight, I could sense Sarah's growing unease. She seemed far more open-minded about ghosts than either Jake or me. We reached Milford Road, the spot where this tragic accident supposedly occurred. An abandoned farmhouse loomed ominously ahead like something out of a horror movie. By impulse, I decided it would be fun, and maybe foolish, if we tested out this legend together. I turned into what appeared to be once upon a time an inviting driveway, but now lay overgrown with weeds. I killed the engine and flashed the headlights three times. Sarah protested nervously, but curiosity got the better of all three of us. For several moments nothing happened. Then suddenly, a single headlight appeared far down the road, about three-quarters of a mile away. We watched incredulously as it slowly approached, growing larger and brighter until finally illuminating the entire area surrounding us. Panic set in when realization struck. This light wasn't coming from any motorcycle or vehicle. It floated toward us unnaturally steady without any discernible source. My skepticism began wavering rapidly, while fear gripped Sarah's heart tightly. As the light drew nearer, we braced ourselves expecting it to reveal some prankster, but instead found nothing but pure darkness surrounding us. Just then, I flipped the headlights back on, hoping the illusion would shatter, but instead, the glowing orb vanished completely, leaving behind eerie silence. We sped away from the scene, hearts racing, trying to process what just happened, each exchanging bewildered glances filled with disbelief and fear. In the days following, I tried rationalizing the experience. Was it a trick of the light? 
collective hallucination, an elaborate hoax, but deep down I knew something supernatural had occurred right before our eyes. That night changed my perspective entirely regarding paranormal phenomena. While still approaching ghost stories with skepticism, I could no longer dismiss them outright. Memory of the phantom headlight approaching our car remains a vivid reminder of the haunting nature of unknown forces lurking just beyond sight. Even now, years later, I can't help but wonder whether a young man's spirit still roams those roads searching for peace, or perhaps simply reliving a tragic moment forever etched into local lore. We hope you enjoyed this chilling tale. If it sent shivers down your spine, give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. What was your favorite part? Don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling stories and hit that notification bell so you never miss a scare. Until next time, stay spooky and remember, sometimes the darkest shadows add the most terrifying secret.